know, we, as, as coaches, you guys are, are different. You guys are one, one of thousands of coaches that are here this weekend. Um, and it's encouraging for me to see you here investing into this time. Um, because uh, one of the verses that uh, we've been, that, that the Lord has been putting on me a lot lately is, is Psalm 23 is popular, okay? Uh, but it's actually verse five um, that has just been hitting me hard. We've, I've talked about this with some of our student leaders, but also some of our coaches. And, and verse five says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. It says, you honor me by anointing my head with oil and my cup overflows with blessing." It is, it's our, uh, our hope and our prayer this morning that you guys, that we be able to encourage you, that you would be poured into, um, whether it's through um, uh, Cam, who's going to share with us, Purcell, who's going to share with us, or at your tables when you're just conversing with other coaches. Our hope is that you are filled up so that you can go from here and that it can be out of the overflow of that, that you're able to then minister to your fellow coaches and your players, um, but also as husbands, uh, as, as fathers, and those walks of life as well. So uh, I'm going to pray for us, and then I'm going to introduce our, uh, our guests up, and then we'll kind of get going with that. So, uh, Father God, Lord, what an honor and privilege it is to be here this morning. Lord, I thank you for waking these coaches up, uh, for them to be here, to invest into this time this morning, to, to spend time in fellowship with other coaches, and uh, who are striving after the same things as being a next level coach that that uh, is doing it for the right reasons and that right reason is you, Lord. And so, Father God, I just pray that you would um, empower them this morning, that you would pour into them, that your spirit would be alive, and Lord, that they would leave this place changed and encouraged uh, to go out and to be your hands and feet. And we love you, Lord, and praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so our... Uh, let me introduce our, our uh, guests, and then I'll have them come up, and then we'll kind of get going. So uh, our first guest, uh, Cam Babb, um, what an honor uh, to have him come and, and share with us this morning. So Cam, if you're not familiar, uh, he is a two-time captain at Ohio State um, as a receiver. Uh, he's actually the 15th Buckeye uh, to be named team captain multiple times. Uh, he was the Block O Jersey honoree this year. Uh, he's persevered. If you haven't heard his testimony, he's persevered through a ton of knee injuries and, uh, and been a leader on the team uh, regardless of that. Um, he uh, spoke at uh, President Johnson's uh, Institute this uh, past year. Uh, he's already graduated with a degree in communications. Uh, he's a four-time OSU scholar-athlete. Uh, and so welcome Cam up. Uh, Purcell. Uh, Purcell Gaskins, a two-sport athlete. Uh, he's at Kansas State. Uh, freak of nature. Um, he was a uh, he's a high jumper and uh, and then a and then a football player at the same time. And uh, he was he won high school state titles, junior Olympic champion, but his career high is in '93 uh, when he was actually the NCAA indoor uh, Division One um, high jump champion at seven feet five and three quarter inches as a 230 pound linebacker so i think something like that uh, but he was all conference in football all american for the wildcats and he was a finalist uh for the dick, dick buckets award spent three seasons in the nfl after being taken in the fourth round um, he was a pro bowl alternate for um was the st louis rams and uh, finished his career with the panthers uh, since then, he's served as a football coach, a track coach. He's been recognized as a, an organizational leader. Um, he's uh, been serving as a pastor, CEO of Solutions uh, Church, and now he also works as a software development engineer for Amazon Books. And so we welcome him up for so. All Two claps! Two claps! Two claps! Woo! Let's go, baby! Come on! We see some men who want it! Glory! 
Come on. Great, man. Oh, man. All right, so we'll start off with some uh, some decent questions here. So, um, Kate, the first question to you is, if you were stranded on an island, what Buckeye teammate are you picking to get stranded with to help you survive? Um, I would say either Kate Stover or Tommy Hickenberg. Okay, why? Um, those, those cats are different. They don't run through a brick wall if you ask them to. Uh, and Kate, he's a farmer, so he know a lot of <laughs> so I'm probably cased over there. All right, uh, Purcell. Um, all right, so you're, you you've had a your, your career playing days is probably more when we were all you know kids and watching and playing ourselves. So if you if there's fourth and goal, ball's on the one, game is on the line. What teammate of yours do you want lined up next to you that you trust to give it all he's got to do his job? It have to be Mario Smith. Mario was a, a strong safety that uh, anytime I would hit someone, I could count on him hitting me in my back. So <laughs> I know he's not going to let me go back. So he's hitting anything that moves. So Mario Smith uh, out of Miami right now, he's doing great things. He has a couple of schools down there. But yeah, Mario Smith is strong, awesome. hard in the safety, number four. I love it. That's good. Good. Okay, uh, well, let's start off with uh, uh, from a coach of, uh, talking about coaches. Cam, we'll just start with uh, who is the most impactful coach you've had and why? Um, if, I, if I had to pick one coach, it actually wouldn't be a coach that is in terms of like X and O, I would say. It was a strength coach, um, Coach KP. Um, he was probably the most impactful, at least in my time at Ohio State. Uh, just because he was a man of faith and um, he did a great job of, even though we were lifting, even though we were working hard and he was pushing me to, to different limits, um, he did a great job of just incorporating like Christ and allowing space to have conversations and space where I can come to him and, and just be real and be honest and be me. Um, and so there's a lot of time you talk about the adversity that football brings um, and just the growth that it brings. A lot of times where he challenged me, but I was I was able to be challenged and like to be challenged by him because of the relationship that we had. Um, you know, not only you know in the weight room and even on the field, but um, because of the, the conversation we've had um, and just he was real and, and allowed me to know the different life experiences that he had um, as a player uh, as he played um, at Florida and different things like that. So um, yeah, just having conversations that didn't really have anything to do with football necessarily, but just life in general, just who I am as a man. Um, so I was saying he probably had the biggest impact yeah, that's good. Um, you know, at Ohio State. That's good, I can All right, Purcell, what about you? Same question. Uh, it would have to be um, similar to Cam. It was my strength coach at uh, Kansas State, Jerry Palmieri. Um, you know, got me rooted and grounded in FCA. Um, really understood how to speak to the, that, that in our generation, that you have to speak to the heart before you speak to the mind. X and O's gonna go in one ear and out the other with the kid. And when you speak beyond the X's and O's, when you speak in a language that I call, that's rooted in eternity and not in time, that paints a picture brighter than where the kid is at and shows them where they're going, kids will buy into that all day. We, we would run through a wall for Jerry Paul Mary just because when he spoke, he spoke uh, to the heart. You know, it was it was it was heart communication. You have, you know, you're in college, you're broke, and there are things going on in your life. And man, he he could somehow speak directly to that without speaking to that, and it would shift you, and you would you would understand and know that there's life after football, and there's more to life than X's and O's. And so, um, he actually added, you know, a fifth section to our playbook, and that was um, EI emotional intelligence and I'll go into more about that but it was so important to me that was so beneficial to me that it was somebody that coach Snyder trust to tap into that area of our lives so coach uh Jerry Parman that's good that's really good yeah. um all right Cam um obviously I know your story and um I assume there has to be a time or a season where um in the midst of a season where motivation was difficult um, can you give us a, a coach or maybe even just a way that a specific coach helped you through that 
time, helped you persevere through that time and motivated you to not obviously give up, um, but also to, to be positive, to, cause you were obviously a huge positive influence in the midst of adversity. Yeah. Um, so uh, was there a specific coach or a way that they uh, motivated you? Um, yeah, um, I would say the difference, again, I had great relationships with coaches, um, with X and O, like running through Coach, Coach Hart, uh, Coach Day, uh, running backs, Coach, Coach Alfred. I had a lot of great relationships, and I would say they all poured into me um, at some point throughout, you know, my five years at Ohio State. Um, but I was just with knee injuries and everything, um, a lot of my time was with the, the trainers and then also with the strength staff, just because you're, you spend more time with your strength staff than you do anybody else because you're there in the summer, you're there in the winter, and coaches aren't recruiting. So while the coaches are gone, we're with the strength staff. Um, so yeah, we coach Kenny Parker, KP, and Coach Quinn, and then you know I have um, the one guy that I would say helped me through it all with my my rehab, um, you know, therapist, whatever, how, whatever, athletic trainer um, named Adam Stewart, and he did such a great job of changing the re how rehab was. So you know, usually tell your ACL, you know, you're you're gonna be pushing weight, you got to get back to you know making sure your knee can straighten out, and and just the simple things of you know knee functions. Um, but he did a great job of not allowing me to feel totally isolated from the team in the sense that um, when you're hurt, there's a lot of times where, um, in my experience, like you raw and authentic, where coaches kind of, you're so focused. Not that it's wrong, because as a coach, you got a lot going on, right? You'd be so focused on the guys that are healthy and we got to get them right, especially if the guys out for a year. Um, it can be hard to kind of involve in, in different situations, you know? So. Um, he did a great job of, of just keeping my head straight and creating, um, you know, different training systems, if you want to say, to where um, it was football implied and I could, you know, really focus on my game without having to actually be out there and running routes and doing different things. Uh, but yeah, just, I would say, just the pouring from the strength side, just pouring into me of, of belief of like, there was many times where I doubted and I wanted to quit and I was like, I don't, I don't think I can do this. Um, and even before I started following Christ, um, I didn't follow Christ until after the third ACL, which was my the end of like my sophomore year. I would say sophomore season. Um, I was kind of focused. I was, um, you know, everybody before Christ. You know, the the dirtiness and uh, the, you know everything that um, the unholiness, everything that you you know as human beings are with sin. Um, that's what that was me. And so I was trying to fill a void of um, I wasn't with the team. You know, through practice and everything off to the side. So the only time I could feel that connection with the team was. Um, you know, on Friday, Saturday, Thursday nights, whenever it was, um, it was just trying to fill that void of feeling empty. Um, but then, you know, having coaches that, you know, poured into me definitely helped. But ultimately, um, it was the Lord. It was just nobody else. You know, he put so many great people in my life um, to help me with that, and he uses so many different people. Um, but when you experience the presence of God, there's something that you can't walk out the same way. You know, when you come in one way, and when you when you touch his presence, now you can you know you can experience him, and I would say if you don't change, it's like somebody told me the analogy of if you were to walk on the highway and get hit by a bus, right? You and you survived, you would you would change. Something would be different about you after that experience. After you got hit by that bus, you think how big a bus is, right? Um, how much bigger is Jesus Christ? How much bigger is the Holy Spirit? How much bigger is the Father? And so when you truly experience his presence, something changed, and and it was through the suffering through all the ACLs, through everything, um, through the anger, through everything that he and his mercy and his grace, when there was, when there was a moment where in my dorm where I had, I had no option but to look up because as football players, as coaches, we can, we can put that our identity in what we do. You know, it's like, since I was eight years old, it's your camp bad, the football player, you got all these offers, everything, your camp bad, like that's what you're known for. But when that's taken away, who are you? When your job, when you lose your job, who are you? You know, it's, it's hard to think about when you lose a family member and, and or even, you know, God forbid, like a, your wife or husband, like, who are you? You know, and so it, we have so many things that are above, we put above Christ. And um, when you lose it, it's like, it, it brings you to reality. And I like how you touched on I mean, eternity. And um, just in my walk here in, in college, I've, I've learned not to have this earthly perspective of the right here, right now, um, because it will all fade, it will all vanish. Um, it's all in vain. Everything. I mean, it's good. The football is good. It's great. But like the trophy that you hold up at the end of the year is gone. Like in a few years, like you can't tell me 15 years ago when national championship we won the Super Bowl without me go look it up. It was the MVP.
but you know, with that eternal, you know, the eternal perspective of like, I'm going to be before the throne room someday. And I just wanted to tell everybody about it, including the coaches, having a conversation with the coaches. Um, and they poured into me, but I also said the Holy Spirit would allow me to pour into them, you know, just as much. Um, so it's that relationship and dynamic that the Holy Spirit um, allowed us to, to have to on top. Hey, Brian, can I interject something real quick? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you something, Cam. The testimony that you and CJ had after that game you got your touchdown was the most powerful testimony I've ever seen from an athlete at an athlete ever. Yeah. I mean, I, I said that out to everybody. I said, you've got to see. I'm so proud of you. That was a beautiful, beautiful testimony. One, probably one of the most clear uh, stories of the gospel that an athlete could ever get. It was so beautiful. So, so thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I love, I love hearing you know people say that, and, it, and it's great. You know, um, but the reason that I do that, the reason that we do that as Christians, you know, and it's great. You want to touch the world, and, and my goal was at that moment was. It was not, I wanted the world to hear. I wanted as many people to be saved because that's the gospel. It's for everybody that will listen. There's not anybody on this earth that's ever lived that did not have a chance or will not have a chance to receive Christ, you know, one way or the other. And so that was my goal. And I wanted, my prayer was, Lord, if you could just give me one, if you could just give me one person that can just hear this, um, that, that was my heart. That was my heart posture, you know, because you know, it's either the God that says, it's Jesus or the world, you know, and it's like, choose today who you, who you will serve, right? So you know the world's already, you know, the world just, it hates God, you know, just in our, in our nature, we hate God. So that was my heart posture. And, and um, I can truly say that when people glorify me, I don't know if it's a good thing or if they're not glorified, not you glorified, but you did such a great job. It's like, it wasn't anything I did. It was all, it was all the Holy Spirit. It was, it was the living God that did it through me. I was just a vessel that said yes. And no matter how big my yes was, he took that yes and he allowed my story. And, and there were so many nights and so many days where it's like, I don't know what to do, you know, and um, and that's what it comes down to is, is dependency on God. That's what it comes down to because you can't. The difference between somebody that's saved and that's not saved is just I know that I need Christ. I need the blood of Jesus. That's it. I'm no different than the homeless man on the street or, or whoever it is, whoever the other sinner is, because I sin every day. But I just know I am nothing without Jesus Christ. So, yeah. so I appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Very well Amen. said. Very well said. Uh, Purcell, I'll kind of piggyback off that with you know, Cam talked about the Lord putting the right people in his life at the right time and, and giving him coaches, brothers, whatever. Um, what would you say, uh, as a coach and or an athlete, um, what were ways that you either, either experienced as a player or a coach either way to be able to build that relationship and that trust with that player? Um, for me, first, first I have to speak as a player. Um, just the greatest experience um, that I had that kind of was the catalyst for everything in my life moving forward was uh, I was share in Kansas State. The Kansas State is a place called Aggieville in Manhattan, Kansas. And that's where all the clubs and the drinking and everything, the partying goes on. And I'm in Aggieville, I'm getting drunk, smoking marijuana, getting high. And I'm coming back from Aggieville and, I'm, and it's like the Holy Spirit showed me me and the ugliness. And I'm walking back and tears just start streaming down my face. I'm like, this is not even me. And I'm walk at that time, I'm walking by a chapel. Kansas City has a chapel that's open 24 seven. I'm walking by that chapel. And uh, I see it. I said, man, I'm going. I went in that chapel and I kneeled to make sure that nobody see me. My, you know, I had, to, you know, I had this image. I was the guy there. If, if you wanted to go do something, where's PG? I was a guy like somebody picking on one of my players. Them was my guys. I'm, I'm look, I'm coming to get you. So I was that type of dude. That I was a regular. I didn't mess with nobody. But if you mess with my kids, we gonna have a conversation. But, but anyway, I make sure nobody looking. So I go into the 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 uh, the, the chapel and I kneel down man, and I just say, Lord. If you who you say you are, you see my condition. You know that's not me. Come and see about me. That's the greatest and most powerful prayer ever for you. When I said that, and I'm kneeling down. Now, I was born and raised in Missionary Baptist Church, so didn't know nothing about Holy Spirit, didn't know nothing about power of God, didn't know nothing about I just knew Romans 10, 9, and 10. 
and some hymns. And so, <laughs> bringing in the sheaves, and <laughs> we sure come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And so, power of God hit me. When I say hit me, it was just like somebody poured a hot oil all over me where it was just burning, the fire of the Holy Spirit was burning from the inside out. And it was just like, I started speaking in this other language. And I know all this, see all this I can speak of it now, but I thought, I was like, this is crazy. I, mean, I was so messed up. I thought I was just going crazy. <laughs> but when I got up off my knees, I was drenched in sweat. And the time I walked out, just so happens my friends see me, they laughing. Like, PG man, you fell in the pond, man. What's wrong? <laughs> I was drenched. And I just went to laughing with them and walking back to the dorm like, da 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 they didn't know I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Wow. And when I laid down in my dorm room, the love of Jesus Christ wrapped itself around me. And I slept for about 16 hours. And when I got up, I felt new, brand new. Now guess what? I woke up that next day, because that was a Friday, that Saturday, we went back out and party. But guess what? The regeneration process has started on the inside of me, of Christ redeeming me from the inside out. And from that, that change and revolutionized my whole life. Because I realized that something was greater on the inside of me than what I could ever experience externally. And so when you talk about that experience as a player, then being a coach, I realized the importance of speaking beyond X's and O's to my players. I realized that the power that was on the inside of me wanted to be on the inside of them. And the only way it can get on the inside of them is I speak beyond the X's and O's. I speak to their heart before I speak to their mind. To speak to the mind before you speak to the heart is a violation of that individual. Because I have to speak to his needs or her needs before I can ever equip them with the information that I have. They have a social and emotional need. You know how many kids are missing fathers. The impact that we have starts with us speaking to the need. And in, in speaking to the need, we get their mind. They'll, a child will give you their mind. A kid will give you their mind. If you speak and show and paint a picture for them that's brighter than the peripheral mess of growing up without a father, of, of being in this situation, in this relationship, or making these mistakes. If you speak to them beyond that, the brightness of the words of the future that you create for them a blind them from that. So as a coach, they would send me kids that were all troublemakers. My first coaching job, it was me, Randy Moss, Michael Barrow, Don Sauce, a bunch of NFL guys said, we're gonna go to the worst school in Charlotte, North Carolina, we're gonna start coaching. When I got there, they had 12 players, all of them were gang members. They would fight the coach, they would come to practice smoking marijuana. We got there, I went to every drug dealer on campus and said, either you're going to play football for me or I'm getting you arrested. But what you're not going to do is sell drugs on my campus. This is my campus. And when I begin to take ownership and say, now if you want to play football, football for me, it's going to start with you emptying your pockets right now. It's going to start with you telling me where all every little hide spot at. And I'll go handle the rest. And I partnered with all of the stakeholders in that, in that community, whether it was the banks, the grocery stores, and I held them accountable to pour into it back into those kids in that community. And we began to speak to them. I, I couldn't have summer camps because my kids were losing too much weight because when they would practice two a days, they would go home and didn't have food to eat. So you have to go like, we're, we're putting them on the scale. Well, why are they? So we had to start a food pantry. So we had to get the grocery stores involved. We had to get the restaurants involved. And then we had parents who were on drugs and on this and on. We had to go and get all of these other resources. But when we spoke to that, now yes, check this out. We didn't win a game. But that, that team that had never had a JV in, in 15 years, we had more kids. We had 87 kids come out. Because they, the silent cry, see, I've always said this, what you applaud, you encourage. In that community, all they, all they applauded was, these kids are bad. 
they come from bad families. We had like 42 nationalities in one school. That was the dumping ground for a kid. If, if they didn't have a, a green card, they would dump them in that school. This is a school. So we had a variety of languages of kids. But when you meet, when you hear the silent cry of the people that you call to serve, you don't have to worry about the X's and O's. I, I spoke at a Glacier Clinic one, and I talked to a coach. I don't know if you know me. A coach, a great high school coach in South Carolina. He said, Purcell, he said, I was 0-10 with the same X's and O's that I was 10 and 0. He said, but the one thing I added was a fifth package to my playbook. And it reminded me of Coach Paul Mary. And he said, and that was social and emotional intelligence, growing them from the inside out and making that the most central part of my program. And he said, guess what? In a year, we went from being 0-10 to 10-0 and, and winning three state titles. And then he went on, he was coaching with um, Coach Muschamp at um, South Carolina. I'm a coach on Muschamp at the University of South Carolina. So it's simple. Make Christ central and everything else revolves around it. X and O's don't change. You know that. Jimmy's and Joe's may change, and they are no ready-made dogs. They're broken kids. They're broken. And so my, my favorite, if I could leave you with any scripture, it would be this. Psalms 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide with shadow of the Almighty. Get a kid to steward over his secret place and realize that everything he does in secret, he's doing in front of the Father because the Father's standing there and he's in that shadow. Steward over your secret place. What you do in secret is done openly because God sees everything. And when they, when that gets them to have self-accountability, See, we ain't talking about no accountability partner. No, you got an accountability partner. He a big one, too. <laughs> we ain't got to, well, I got to call him because I'm going, no, man. He that dwells in a secret place. Your secret place is God's home, brother. And when you can get them to have self-accountability, you'll see your program grow. You got two types of kids, want to do's and need to do's. Never, never make want to do kids your leaders. Because they do it. Those are the kids that jump off sides all the time, get the, get the penalty at the wrong time. They can always hold. They can always do something, but they, that's just in them. They do what they want to do. And then you have need to do kids, or your captains. I call them th thermometers and thermostats. Thermometers are your kids who are going to respond to whatever comes back. If the room is hot, they're going to be hot. If it's cold, it's gonna, they're going to be cold. But it's your thermostats that you gotta put in leadership. The guys that set the environment. They set the temple, they set the tone. And you know every day they're gonna be on. Those are the kids you want as your leaders and your captains, because they'll grow your program for you. That's good, that's good. Yeah, thanks. Thank I'd be signing up ready to play for you. <laughs> These guys don't want to hear from me, so I'll ask Cam. Cam, you just heard S's a little off script. Would you play for Coach Purcell? Yes, sir. Purcell, so why? Uh, when, you, when you hear, again, just a Christ Center, uh, you have a Christ Center team, you have a Christ Center coach, I would say uh, it makes it makes everything, again, not only makes everything better for the team, but it. I know with, with a coach like that, that he cares about me more than what I do on the field. And for a player, that matters. Because um, you talk to players, it's, it's, you, you feel like sometimes, like, okay, I'm in Jersey, especially when you get to the college level or whatever, it's like you got 100 players on this roster, um, and you can kind of feel like, you know, if I, if I don't perform the right way, especially you got an idea all this different stuff coming out, I mean, it's probably even worse than the pros. If, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, if I mess up, like, there's no room to mess up because if I do, you know, then, then it's on to the next, you know, and, and when you have that, it can, there's no freedom in that from a football standpoint. There's no, I'm not, you're allowing me to just play free. And I think that those are the best teams and even in life when you're free in Christ, when you're free to just to go out there and let it loose and not, and not have to think as much that those are the best players that can just run around and just allow it. They're playing football free and allow it. They're at your athletes to be your athletes, you know? And so I think playing with a coach like that, he just allowed me to just be me, you know, and, and grow in an eternal way and in a way with Christ that um, there's no payment for. There's no there's no way that that can go. Um, you can you can pay for that. I would say just the the 
the way that you lead young men, because like I said, even myself at one point was were a lot of flaws. I didn't know who I was. There's so many young men without fathers, without so for some so some young some young men, it's like you're not you're not the father, but like they look to you as a father. You know, and you can I think you can kind of overlook that and think, okay, well I gotta we gotta win this game this weekend, you know, we got all this other that other stuff, but not knowing he might be going through something at home or, or school or and that might the effect of the, the home life or the school life, you never know how that can affect him on the field. You might think he is, he's jumping off sides, he's doing this, he's messing up the play. Well, he got something. So I would say Coach Day, and I love Coach Day, I love Ohio State, but they used to have this red line philosophy. So once you cross this red line on the field, like everything that you're dealing with outside it goes away. Like it's football, like focus on it. And while that's, I believe that's good, and I wouldn't tell him to change what he's saying, because that's a good concept, I would say. I'll say it's very hard to do that when you have when you, when you have players that are going through some of the things that they're going through, right? And those things can affect what you do on the field. So I would say again, have that personal relationship, even time that you you pull out to just talk to guys and get to know their heart and allow them to share their heart and, and openness. Um, I think that can do wonders for you as a coach and team. So, yeah, that's really good. Well, I, I appreciate uh, you guys sharing with us. Um, if you, uh, as you guys have just heard. And, um, the, the conversations I had with both of these men before um, this morning or before this, um, the biggest thing that I, I noticed is the, these two men love the Lord above all things. And, and to me, I feel like that is such an encouragement. Um, and every time I'm able to meet uh, a coach, um, and as soon as I walk by, man, that coach loves the Lord. Like, it is such a blessing and such an encouragement because there's ways you can do and you can try to implement things in your program and all those kind of things, which is good and it's needed. Um, but man, when you got a coach who loves the Lord, that is put on display and cook and players notice it and they feel it and they experience it and, and it changes lives. And so um, uh, we're, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna switch it up a little bit here now and I'm gonna give you guys a chance to actually converse at your tables. Um, we've got about 15 uh, minutes uh, left uh, before they're going to kick us out for the next session. At the center of your tables, there's uh, these there's papers and kind of a discussion guide. Some of the some of the questions kind of parallel with some of the things we talked about this morning. And I just want to encourage you guys to go around and actually walk through um, this over the next 15 minutes and just encourage one another and share with one another at your table. Um, and then uh, and then I'll kind of come up and I'll pray for us and dismiss us here in just a few. I'm actually trying to go to Israel, man.